Hello, I'm Tom Rothman of 20th Century Fox. Welcome to Fox Legacy. We're glad to have you with us. Now is the winter of our discontent made glorious summer by this son of York. Al Pacino, Al Pacino, Al Pacino. John Travolta, Saturday Night Fever. He said it all. There is no one, no one, in the last 40 years of American film and theater quite like Al Pacino. The nobility of the house held in contempt while great promotions are daily given to ennoble those that scarce some two days since were worth a noble. I have had the life blessing of knowing Al for almost 30 years since I was a young associate working for the late legendary Arthur Klein in New York City. And Al was just bursting onto the firmament. There was and is no one like him. No one with his artistic courage, curiosity, or commitment, and no one with his basic decency and humanity. I remember vividly a small moment when I was a young nobody, as opposed to the old nobody which I am now, in a meeting with the great man himself, when he turned quietly to ask me what I thought, and then listened with genuine interest, as he did to everyone. Is Shakespeare, William Shakespeare? William Shakespeare, right. You like him? It's to be or not to be, that's the question, right? Right, okay. that right. is the question. <laughs> Winner of the Directors Guild of America Award for the film you'll see tonight, Al has been nominated for eight Academy Awards and one for Scent of a Woman. And this past year, he received the American Film Institute's highest honor, the Lifetime Achievement Award. The accolades are myriad, but they don't capture the eccentric genius of the man himself. To understand that, you need to watch Looking for Richard, which I consider perhaps the very best movie I've ever seen about the process of acting. Her mourning is genuine because she loved him. And is it an accident that she meets Richard, the man who killed this man and her husband? You don't like that. Does anybody have a better thing than Frederick on this? <laughs> you see, quite alone among his American movie star peers, Al has maintained throughout his career, from early, middle, and until now, a passionate devotion to the stage. He has consistently taken time away from the many millions of dollars he earns every time he does a movie to work on stage for little or no money, or, in the case of Looking for Richard, to actually finance the project himself. Al loves the theater. And unlike others who talk about it, he actually does it. The high-risk, high-wire act. Looking for Richard combines all of Al's passions into a living, breathing, ever-evolving film, a restless search for the meaning of Shakespeare's great play that is really, at its heart, a dramatization and deconstruction of their very process of acting and directing. I did Looking for Richard because I wanted to find a way to do it. How could I pull it off? And it took me four years. The film is kind of impossible to characterize. I guess it's a documentary, but it really isn't that since it enacts whole scenarios of the play as well. But what it is, is a priceless, chaotic window into the soul of a great artist and his obsessional odyssey that began 23 years earlier with his very first portrayal of Richard III in Boston in 1973. Al says at one point in the film you'll see, he says, I'm confused just explaining it, so I can imagine how you must feel hearing me. It's very confusing. I don't know why we even bother doing this at all, but uh, we're going to give it a little try. And therein lies the essence of the man and the movie he actually gives it a hell of a try, as he always does. The movie may have taken four years to film, but the artist it reveals has been shaped over a lifetime. Now is the winter of our discontent, made glorious summer by this son of York. Watch and marvel. When my wife and I exchanged rings at our wedding, 
we each said to the other, Look how my ring encompasseth thy finger. Even so thy breast encloseth my poor heart, where both of them, for both of them are thine. This beautiful iambic pentameter is Richard to Lady Anne, Act 1, Scene 2 of Richard III. We were pretty confident that our family and friends would take those words for the surface poetry we intended, not the hidden menace that actually lay underneath Richard's desires. But had we seen looking for Richard at the time, with the image of Al Pacino in libidinous pursuit of the incandescent Winona Ryder, I have no doubt we would have chosen something sweet from, say, As You Like It instead. Look, my ring encompasses thy finger. Even so, thy breast encloseth my poor heart. As Pacino says in the wholly original film you just saw, you don't need to understand every single word that's said as long as you get the gist. Just trust it and you'll get it. And if you just trust looking for Richard, you will find some version of him that is meaningful to you. And along the way, I hope gained an unparalleled insight into the work of Shakespeare, the art of acting, and the pursuit of the impossible. The final thrill of making the hard look very easy. Which is, after all, why we're here on the Fox Movie Channel. I did looking for Richard, and it was such an exciting time. I, I, I just only, I only can hope it happens to everybody. I hope it can happen to me again. For Fox Legacy, I'm Tom Rothman. We'll see you next time.